Hello everyone, thank you so much for attending our webinar. Fantastic to see so many of you in attendance from all corners of the world. I've seen Egypt and Armenia pop up so far, so do let us know where you are here from. We're delighted to have you with us. My name is Kira O'Sullivan. I work on the international skills team here at Century, working directly with our schools in Europe and in Africa. And I'm delighted to be hosting today's online showcase event, uh, Developing Independent Learners with the primary team at Cairo English School, who you'll be meeting in just a second. For those of you who are not familiar with Century, just to let you know who we are, we're an edtech company based in London that supports schools all across the world with our AI-driven personalized learning platform. One of those schools that we work with is Cairo English School, uh, who are one of Egypt's leading schools, a BSME school member, and who are part of the ESOL group of schools. It's been incredible to watch this school as they've deployed and embedded our technology over the past year. And this term alone, the students at Cairo English School have answered over a quarter of a million self-marked questions on the platform, which is absolutely fantastic. Today, I'm joined by the primary team at Cairo English School, who will be sharing how Century has supported them in developing independent learners. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to Toya Are. Toya is head of primary at Cairo English School, raised and educated in the UK. She transitioned from a career in law to education as she has a passion for working with young children. Her experience in education ranges from foundation stage to all through primary, and she decided to move from inner city London, teaching to the warmth of Cairo seven years ago and has never looked back. Although Toy has mentioned that there's currently a sandstorm um, at school, so perhaps not so sunny at the moment. Next, we have Nora Adley. Nora has worked at Cairo English School for six years and is currently the year three team leader. Raised in London, she moved to Egypt in 2014. Altogether, she has nine years of teaching experience from the UK and Egypt, spanning early years, foundation and primary. And finally, we have Eric LaRue. Eric is originally from South Africa and part of the CES team as year five class teacher since 2020. He has nine years of teaching experience and has completed an additional degree with Bachelor of Arts in Human Movement Science. Thank you to Toya, to Eric and to Nora for joining me today. You'll be hearing from, from them throughout this presentation. And of course, please do put questions through to them uh, via the Q&A box and I'll pick those up towards the end of the session. I'm now going to hand you over to Toya, who's going to talk you through how um, the school came about choosing Century as a platform and the steps that they've taken as primary team to embed our technology at the school. So Toya, I'll pass over to you um, and you can talk our audience through what you did. Uh, hello everyone and good afternoon, good morning or good evening, depending on which part of the world you are joining us from. Um, and thank you so much, uh, Chiara, for that lovely introduction. So just as Kara said, uh, to give you a bit of insight into um, how we came to signing up to Century and how we've been deploying it across our school at Cairo English School. Um, so we've been working with Century now for just um, under one year. So at the end of this December, it will have been exactly a year that we've been using the program. And one of the reasons we decided to sign up to the program was one, to find a kind of educational software based program that was aligned with curriculum expectations and objectives, especially with us being a British school overseas. Um, and the second reason was mainly that AI element where it can kind of personalize learning to each individual student while also um, maintaining an adequate teacher workload. So I guess the top three things that we've seen of, of the benefits of using the program is that we do get that personalized learning element. So each child can have a learning and a recommended path specific to them based on their engagement and what they do on the software. Um, the second thing is it does significantly reduce teacher workload in terms of having to um, analyze and allocate and differentiate in a lot of different ways um, because the system kind of automatically does that for us. Um, and I think the third biggest one with anyone working in education is the motivation and the engagement of the students. So the students really um, love the program. They're very much engaged in it. Um, they love going on it. They love using it, it for different things, be it academic or just kind of sharing how they feel. And all that data can be collated within the program. 
So when we made that decision to join, how we thought about rolling it out. So initially, uh, we just basically um, played around with the program as SLT, just to get a sense of what it looks like from a teacher's perspective. And also um, we pretended to be students to see what the children see so that we can best decide for our school, how we share this with staff. Um, and our first thing was making sure that the children were engaging with the program because this is a new software. So we kept that very much in house and the focus was just on the children logging on, experiencing whatever nuggets they wanted to experience. Um, so we kept that to just the classroom first by using some of the diagnostic nuggets, which um, before a unit of study, so the teachers, class teachers could do that with the children in a very controlled environment um, so that they could direct the children and support their children with any needs. Um, and up until before the start of this academic year, the children have been picking their own nuggets and we've um, now used it as part of our daily homework. Um, so our children have daily homework um, and they can pick any nugget, which is essentially a mini lesson. And that can range from English, math or science, just to re-enhance some of their core concepts and skills. Now, since the half term break, we then decided to start actually telling the children which nuggets to do. Um, and the main reason for this is because now we have that kind of participation and engagement by the children of wanting to go on it. It was making sure that all children were doing stuff as part of the homework, which would be challenging or in um, line with their ability and their attainment. So we don't assign the nuggets, but we do stipulate to the children the specific nuggets they need to do within the week. And so far that's been working well and that's been really positively received also by our parents, um, because the parents can see that there's kind of consistency across uh, classes within year groups. Um, we also got our parents on board with the software by after introducing it to the children within school, then inviting them, obviously pre-COVID, to a parent information evening, where we shared with them what the software was, what it looks like, what their child will be able to do, and the benefits of that. Um, and so our, our parents are very much on, on board with that. Obviously the parents of our younger children are more involved in that process, whereas our older children are a lot more independent in managing their interaction with the software. Um, so as I stated a bit earlier, we have mainly been focusing on the children's engagement and utilizing the different nuggets. Um, and as teachers have become more comfortable as well with the software, they have been implementing it within class here and there just to plug uh, gaps of specific children um, to identify key needs in terms of assessment for learning. Our long term plan is in term two to now start using the task elements of Century where we can actually assign actual tasks and projects and kind of build our own assignments using the nuggets or other resources so it becomes a like one stop shop for the children. Then in term two B we want to start incorporating the different nuggets and the different um, subjects that we can use on courses into our actual medium term planning as part of our planning process as a way of introducing lessons because um, there's a range of like slides and videos that can support our actual day to day teaching. And then we'll be slowly moving away from that to then add another layer of data analysis. So there is a lot of data that you can get from Century in terms of not just how much, uh, what percentage a child got, but you can also break that down to specific key strands and specific key areas of learning so that you can best give children targets or uh, know how to move them on. Um, and then the hope is long term that this time next year we will be able to use Century as a way for our baseline assessments um, to also become a more um, increasingly uh, more carbon, carbon friendly school, sorry and hopefully move away from printing a lot of paper. And we have been trying that here and there with some success, um, but obviously we are on a journey <laughs> towards getting to the best place that we can be. Um, so that's it from a leadership perspective in terms of our direction and vision with the company. I think the only thing really left for me to say is um, for myself as a head of school and also for my deputies, it's great that we can see the whole school on there and kind of build a picture also as a whole school where our our strengths and where are our areas for development within curriculum um, because that can also facilitate into our long-term planning in terms of CPD school development priorities. So I think at this stage I'm probably going to hand over in turn and I'm going to um, 
help support with the slides to Nora Adley, who is our year three team leader and year group leader to talk from a year group leader perspective. And then following her, uh, Mr. Eric LaRue will talk about it from a class perspective. Um, so I'm just going to share screen uh, with you all now. Okay, hi everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Apologies in advance if, if there are any technical issues. Um, okay, so as Toya mentioned, we have implemented, we started implementing the use of Sentry uh, last year. And actually, it was really, really lucky that we did because of all the uh, issues, well, all the things that people have had to deal with, with whether it's the online learning or blended learning. And while we do want to foster independent learners, uh, it was kind of like her sudden forced independence that was pushed upon them this uh, last year, um, especially in lower primary with the younger students. Uh, some of them did find it tricky. So with Sentry, it really did make that transition to online learning and then back to uh, full-time in-school learning uh, much easier because it was something that they are able to use at home and then were also able to use in school. Um, they found it very beneficial. The children were able to access it easily. And we also found that parents uh, really enjoyed it as in Century with the Nuggets, it isn't just a matter of a task that the children have to then complete. It does have an element of learning in it, which helps to kind of upskill our parents as well. Um, and then it kind of fosters an independence where the, ch the children can do their task, but at the same time, there is an element of learning with Century as well. So it isn't just go do your task from you know, whatever you can remember. Um, so obviously transitioning back to full-time learning, it really did uh, help us come back to school with the children using it in class as well. Um, in year three, our main use of Sentry is homework. And uh, as you can see on the next slide, the students do have a recommended path to them, uh, which is really good because the children can then kind of take ownership of their learning because we do want to uh, have the children aware of their targets, have them aware of what their next steps are and what they need to do to help themselves improve. And the artificial intelligence in Century kind of helps them to see for themselves what their recommended path is and what they need to do and what they need to work on as well. Obviously, other than their recommended path, if the child wants to challenge themselves, they can independently find which strands they want to do, which nuggets they want to do, whether it is in maths because maths is their favorite subject, or if they want to do a bit more reading. It really does help them to not only find what they should be doing in terms of uh, progression, but also if they want to challenge themselves as well. Um, as I mentioned, we do mainly use it for homework. Uh, and one of the benefits of doing so is that um, because of the recommended path, it makes it easier for us in terms of differentiation, that it is the AI basically differentiates for the child without us having to need to do that manually ourselves with assigning tasks. Um, so obviously that takes a load off of us having to uh, manually assign homework and then think about differentiation and then all of that, um, which then again kind of helps the children to uh, do tasks that are personalized for them and then without us having to add to our workload. Um, on the next slide as well, I kind of just want to show you how we use the data from Century uh, to look at kind of interventions and then uh, what we can use for future planning as well. So um, on Century, you can see that there are a lot more detailed analysis of what the students have done. Uh, it supports our future planning as well. So when I look at our midterm plans, and I see, for example, when I look at Century and I see that there are specific strands that most of the children uh, struggled with, or there are specific questions that most of the children uh, weren't able to do, it then makes it easier to, for us to inform ourselves of what gaps there are in the learning and how we can kind of, um, how it can inform our future planning to kind of consolidate um, that kind of aspect and where the gaps are. So it doesn't just tell you percentages, it doesn't just tell you what they got right or whether or not they did it. Uh, as you can see in the maths one, uh, a specific child found multiplying by three specifically difficult, whereas five, 10 and two are all fine. So in the long run, if you look at that as a year group, it really does help inform future planning. Whereas if we were to do this manually in class, it would take much longer to be able to get such specific data out of the children. 
Um, so that also is really helpful in terms of planning uh, our lessons and um, kind of accommodating the children. Uh, also on the next slide, you'll see the data that is provided by Century really also does uh, support us when we want to plan interventions for the children. Um, it tells us how long have they spent on uh, how long they spent on Century, how many uh, questions they got right in comparison to the time that they've spent. So for example, you might have children that are spending hours and hours on Century, but are not getting that many questions right. So those are the children that we can look to support. Whereas you might have children that need to be challenged because they are spending a short amount of time and are achieving really, really high marks. So again, this data being so specific is really able to kind of inform us of what they can and can't do when they're at home, rather than us just basing it all on what they do with us in class. Um, and then that also supports us in filling in the gaps and challenging specific children and maybe having learning interventions for specific children based on this data. Um, so of course, having all of that has been really, really beneficial in terms of uh, supporting the students within the year group. Um, rather than just basing it on one avenue of learning. Um, so yeah, that's it from me. And I will pass it on to Eric to kind of let you know how he's been able to utilize Century from a class teacher's perspective as well. Thank you, Nora, and uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us um, onto this great um, webinar. Now, from a cl uh, class teacher perspective, the first thing that you would like to know, how does this influence my marking? Well, I must say that's the best thing of century. There's no marking for you. All the papers that the kids bring back to school and you need to do this and that, that's all in the bin. We, and we call that the recycling bin and we're using Century now. So Century helps us to um, easily track the student progress and helps us with um, assigning homework through our um, Century app. So it's easy for us as class teachers to manage uh, the students, track their homework, um, make sure um, they make progress on an individual level. And it takes away a lot of the hassle of marking and checking and asking them, please do Century because um, at first we thought, oh, just this is just going to be another thing, another add-on. But actually the kids enjoy Century and they want to do Century. But if we don't assign Century homework, they will ask us, uh, why don't we have a Century, uh, have Century homework? So this is a really good thing for us as a class teacher. Um, it's easy to identify areas for development um, uh, to fill the gaps. Usually we'll have a student you struggle to fill the gaps, and I'll show you uh, the slide later on um, about this. And we can, uh, as we move to the slide, identifying uh, the gaps made, e made easy. So um, you can see an, on an example on screen, you can see that I've circled the active time of a student. And just for some background, this was a multiplication of eight, and they had questions. And this specific question was eight times eight. And it took the student 40 seconds to answer this question. And for me as a class teacher, I wouldn't know she's struggling with a eight times eight table. And she's taking so long to answer a question about it if I didn't have this technology at hand. Because we'll sit in a class, we'll um, ask the students, are you busy doing your work? And during homework, they will just take out the calculator and work it out themselves. Essentially, is then um, puts them on a time and, and uh, limit them. Not even, not, I wanna, wanna say limit them to century itself, but broadens the, um, the world of maths. And now we're talking about maths and Nora uh, talked about maths and we, we can go into um, SPAG and reading as well, even science. Now, if you look at science, um, at the moment, we're assigning objectives for our students to complete. So we'll do, a um, for instance, life cycles in class. While we do it in class, we'll assign some homework on Century um, with the same objective. 
And afterwards, I can go on to lesson and see on to century and see in that specific nugget that we've assigned how many students understands the work that we've done in class. So this is a, a really, really uh, great tool to use and utilize in your class at home. And um, the question types, if we're looking at on this uh, slide, usually you, you um, see the students struggling with certain question types. Um, fluency, if they're good in fluency, we move on to reasoning and problem solving. But with Century, we can identify which areas are they struggling with. And then the last thing, um, classroom activities, uh, assigning nuggets. Now, it's short burst activities, and this is ideal for revision uh, or end of ob objective uh, understanding. So um, the student, to, to make sure the students own their own skills and specific um, objectives. And this can also be assigned as a whole class approach. So it can be used for intervention uh, to specific students. As I just said, just to focus in on in, in to see what I'm struggling with. For example, if I see my student is struggling with fractions, I can assign a nugget specifically to that specific student, let them do that nugget in class. I can also assign the nugget to the whole class as a uh, lesson started. So before my lesson starts, I can assign this uh, nugget and then it will help them. I can see, I can quickly go back to Century onto my mark, we can see, okay, um, I have five students that struggles a lot with fractions and I can focus more in during lesson time on those five or six students that struggled with it by just receiving the data from Century Tech. And then um, introduce you, introduction of a new lesson um, objective as well, good for a lesson starter and um, to, to assign tasks as a whole school approach, whole class approach as a class teacher, it really makes life easier and to see where I need to put my focus on now. From my side, that's um, what I got in a nutshell, or should I say a nugget? And um, if you have any questions about Century, feel free, um, I'll, I'll hand over to Ms. Twer, thank you. So now we're just going to share a short video that we've created from our student perspective. So I hope you enjoy that um, little summary from there. Hi, uh, my name is Omar Islam. I'm from Cairo industry. Uh, I was actually playing Sentry. It's one of my favorite uh, things to do. Instead of homework doing it on sheet of paper, you could literally use your iPad which is a hundred times better, or tablet or whatever thing you have. Uh, it's portable, you could play with it anywhere. There's no excuses. You have, you could use internet or Wi-Fi. It doesn't provide lots of internet and you could play it anywhere. Hi, my name is Selma. I'm year five. Um, my school is called Cairo English School and the most thing I like about uh, Sentry is it helped me to learn more and it just gives me knowledge and uh, it gives like some challenging parts and when you like do wrong and sometimes say rate this and what's the most thing you like about it and it says rate your feeling so that's what I like about it. Hi my name is Salim Kareem. Um, I'm in 5VL, Cairo English School. I like Century because it helps me with my English or my maths, and it is easy and quick functioning. So I can just press next question and it just gives me it. Hello, I'm Salim Kandil from CS. I'm in 5VL. Uh, I like Century because it makes you learn very easily. It's very fun. I consider doing it every day. It makes you learn everything and make be, make you be better at everything. I do century every day, and my favorite subject is math and reading because math makes me learn my times tables and yeah. And reading makes me know how to read more words and. 
And as you can see here, the kids find it really easy to use Sentry. Uh, there you can see the student is able to access the nuggets so he doesn't just have to go on his recommended path. He knows where to find the nuggets from. He knows how to choose the strand that he likes. The student in particular mentioned that he likes to do a lot of maths. He likes to do a lot of multiplication and division on Sentry. And as you can see here, he's chosen the nugget of counting in multiples of 10. So as you can see, they're able to use the school iPad easily to access the nuggets that they uh, would like to use. So how do you guys feel about being able to rate the nugget that you've done and writing how you felt? Happy, good. I always pick happy. You always pick happy? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I sometimes pick loud and sometimes I pick happy. Amazing. Toya, thank you so much uh, to you and your teachers and students um, for sharing that. There's nothing better than um, seeing students on Centre. I think it, yeah, completely brings it to life. And I definitely something I'm still missing uh, working on Zoom and uh, connecting with our international international schools this way as opposed to getting back out there. But um, hopefully, oh <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, just those kids. Uh, amazing. Um, I think that first student that you showed might have me out of a job where he said about, um, you know, there's no excuse not to use Sentry, you just need an internet connection. <laughs> Very well said. Um, we have some time now for a QA. and a um, I've seen a few um, come through. So Nora, Eric and Toy, if I could ask you to um, just keep your cameras on um, and perhaps on mute um, and we can, uh, yeah, divide up some of those questions. Um, I might kick us off with one, if that's okay. It's a question that I selfishly have to ask you um, as a school team. Um, one thing we've really noticed working with your school, and I know your account manager, Honor, um, has loved working with you um, pretty closely this year, is um, the emotion feedback. Like we saw that student um, clicking happy and saying, oh, I always press happy. Um, that's one thing that really struck us um, because the two emotions that your students leave the entire time is happy, really um, closely followed by proud. Um, so that is incredible in itself that you're seeing those students so happy and engaged and motivated to learn. And what we're also seeing is that your students um, spend a lot of time looking at their dashboards. So they're looking at their strengths and they're looking at their areas for improvement. And what I wondered was how are you fostering that kind of um, learning environment? Like how are you creating learners that are so happy and engaged and enthusiastic about their learners? Because that is a testament to you as an entire school. So I wonder maybe, Toy, if I could come to you first, like what, what have you done as a school body to foster that kind of environment? Well, thank you so much for that. That's always uh, lovely to hear as a head of school. Um, I think the, the main thing when we started with the software is we thought about our school first um, and how it would best match the needs and fit in with our school rather than just here's another thing. So obviously in our school, uh, one of the things we focus on generally uh, putting Century to one side for the moment is making sure that children are engaged um, in our lessons because obviously if children are engaged they tend to make better progress and they tend to retain um, knowledge and skills better and so our curriculum is set up in a way that um, enables when adding Century into it it's not doesn't feel like an add-on it feels a bit more seamless and so also in terms of introducing the software, like I said, initially, it wasn't just here's the software, off you go, the sky's the limit. We've had a very gradual approach to introducing the software. So like initially when we first did it, it was just to introduce the children to the, you know, the did you know segment, which lots of children were so fascinated by all these general random facts. Even us as, as teachers, we were like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> and I didn't know that. And then we were learning and they were learning and they could just kind of log their feelings each day. Um, and I have to say also from a sensory perspective, it was really nice because if we ever had a child who was feeling a bit low and, and um, registered that on the system, Century or whoever it is, the powers that be would communicate that to us as an SLT, and then we could quickly follow up with that child. And then from that, and then getting used to like the interface and the dashboard, which is probably why they look at it a lot more now, we then slowly introduced other steps. So we did that kind of diagnostic testing so the kids could get an experience of what a kind of nugget is like. And then from that, we've segued into homework. And I think homework has really helped because it's maintaining that balance between the parents wanting more work 
but also managing the teacher's workload and making sure that the work that we're providing is fit for purpose and actually having an impact in terms of the children's progression and understanding. And it's like a perfect fit for us because everything is aligned with the curriculum expectations and objectives. It's uh, marked for us and it gives us exactly the data that we can quickly see and need to make the necessary um, decisions moving forward. But it also satisfies the parents in the sense that they, the children can come home and it's like, right, do your century. Even if they just do what we stipulate, they can do more. They're not limited in any way. Um, and it's also good because when we do those diagnostics, it can differentiate for children in terms of whether it gives them a PowerPoint or a video version of the nugget to best support their reading ability as well. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you so much, Ben. You used a, a word when you first um, were speaking, it was the word journey. And I thought that's such a good summary of um, what you as a school have been on and, and how you've brought everyone along on that journey with you, all your different stakeholders, your teachers, so not to overwhelm them with something new too quickly, your students to allow them to explore and be self-directed on the platform, your parents, you know, we really enjoyed doing uh, your parental web webinar and engaging um, with your yeah, fantastic parents. And it's just, yeah, how you progress through those different milestones and set those out. So I think credit to you as a, a school body that you've done that as an SLT to set out those sort of milestones of this is what the expectation is on, on your teachers on your students on your parents and so on so yeah that's fantastic thank you um we've had a question eric i think i might come to you for this one if, okay um just about um sort of models of use you summarized it really well um in your um presentation but uh, raj has just asked a question about um are you using century in class and at home i wonder if you could just share a bit more because i thought you summarized that well different models of use i mean you said about pre-teaching and revision but yeah if you could perhaps share that again Great, um, and, and yes, we use it at home. Um, at first, we introduced it as a homework um, app to support us with student homework, but in class, you can use it in classes as well to, um, and, and we started to use it now a bit more to introduce it in class as a uh, lesson starter or some to do some uh, revision on your work, but mostly homework and, and the, the next question will probably be, is it, is it easy for parents to help the students or track them? Are they, um, will they do their homework? And the parents uh, can go onto the app themselves, they log in with the student details, and they can track the, the students as well to see how much nuggets did they do. And that's also a great tool for, for us to know the parents have a bit of more control than usual because usually the students will just say no we don't have homework or uh, no my homework's done but now there's actual tracking of that of the students so yes we um, at first at home but we're starting to use it at school as well as, as we go on with century Right. right. And it's great to see you incorporating that like multifaceted approach of it is homework, but then I know you also talked about um, pre-teaching and during teaching and revision purposes, as well as the sort of targeted more intervention work that you're doing through Century. So, yeah, great to see all of that being incorporated um, in your classroom practice. Um, Basma has had a question. I'll um, cover that off. It's just about um, coverage. So uh, it, could this be working for a foundation stage? or only upper grades. So um, Basma, the content on Century is from year three up as far as year 11. Um, now, what I would say in particularly your Key Stage 2 um, coverage, we've lots of con content from um, Key Stage 1 to allow for Century to drop the student back to fill in any you know, potential gaps that they have in their learning. Um, so all of our courses have uh, prerequisite material from previous years, but we do say, yeah, year three upwards. We do have some schools that um, put this out to their year twos, but we, we say from year three onwards. Um, fantastic. Let me just pop through the questions again. Uh, Mohammed has a question. How did you launch Century with your staff and what support is there for teachers? Um, I don't know if anyone wants to take that. Maybe Nora from like a year three perspective. I don't know if you did um, particular things to support your teachers in year three. Sorry, do you mind repeating the question? Because I just yeah. cut up for a second. Sorry. No problem. Um, how did you launch Century uh, with your staff? So what support is there for teachers? Okay, so um, in year three, we do mainly use it for homework. And um, luckily, when we because we launched it last year, we were able to kind of implement it gradually. It wasn't just a sudden, OK, this is a very new app that you've never heard of before and we're all going to use it. Obviously, there were PDs put in place uh, by primary uh, leadership team. So there were kind of um, 
there was support provided for us in terms of how to use it and how it is going to be implemented. Um, and it was pretty much straightforward. Like it's very easy to access, even just if you kind of fiddle with it on your own, you kind of get a sense of, okay, this is what how to assign a nugget, this is how to assign a task. The actual platform, the um, homepage, is very easy to understand and I'm not the best technical wizard there is. So if I can use it, then anyone can use it, definitely. And I think to add on to what Nora said, uh, she talked about like you basically play around with it yourself and that's what we're encouraging the staff to do. Because even as a teacher account, um, you can have your own recommended path. Um, so there's like the course book on there that goes you through all the elements of Century, but we also assign whatever courses we assign to the children in terms of their year group specific objectives also to the teachers. So they can effectively do exactly what the children are doing and build up their own kind of keys to uh, help unlock information. Um, and so some of our teachers take that a bit seriously <laughs> and start competing with the children. Um, and so by them being engaged from that perspective, it also makes the children engaged. But I think, again, important from a leadership perspective is understanding with any software, you're not just going to go all guns blazing with everything. So we as a leadership team definitely um, experienced the software ourselves and then identified, OK, this is what needs to come first. This is how we can share this. And we make sure we give staff enough time to get used to that before we add another layer. And that's why we have a long term strategic plan in terms of how we up and um, introduce new concepts and new elements. Um, so that it doesn't feel overwhelming. And I think the biggest thing for teachers is knowing that it reduces their workload. Um, you know, teaching is a, a very demanding job, <laughs> physically and emotionally. And so when you're introducing something new and trying to manage that change, instantly people are like anxious. Well, but as soon as we're like, this is going to make your workload a lot easier, it's going to reduce your workload. And teachers can see that um, they, they're more on board with that. Brilliant. Yeah. And it is that phase approach, isn't it? And not, yeah, asking too much of teachers to see, but also getting them to see the value of the platform. Um, and I love about, yeah, your teachers going on and doing nuggets because every day definitely can be a school day on Century. There's a lot of content there and I'm always going in myself and, and having a go, um, particularly with our science content. So yeah, that's great to hear. Um, and of course, just to caveat all that and saying that, of course, we as a company um, provide full training. Um, we have a dedicated uh, teacher team. Um, we've all spent years in the classroom. They make all the content but they also um, provide all of the training. So, you know, your maths team get trained by former maths teachers about sort of best use and um, how this is going to help you and save you time, like Toya said, for sure. Um, there's a great question I spotted in the chat. Um, so how can we teach the very lowest achiever student with the highest achiever in the same room? So I guess around differentiation, like how are you doing that? I don't know if anyone would like to take on that question about how you cater for those different needs within your classrooms. Um, yeah, so uh, I will say I we use uh, even though we use Century a lot for homework, I do still implement it in the classroom because the kids really do enjoy it and they always get really excited when we uh, use the iPads and use Century in class. Um, I think what I mentioned earlier about the recommended path, that's one thing that kind of is differentiated on its own for the children. Um, but as you also could see from the video, um, one of my highest achievers always chooses the nuggets that he wants to do and he doesn't actually just choose the easier ones because usually they like to challenge themselves and they know are they know how to and are able to do it using sentry because they easily access the strand that they want they know what their recommended path is so it actually makes differentiation a lot easier because we don't have to necessarily assign the same thing to each student everyone could be on sentry doing a completely different thing that is differentiated and personalized for that one student so actually differentiation is one of the easiest things to do on Century because it's not us who do it, it's Century that does it for us. <laughs> so yeah, that's one thing. Fantastic. And yeah, that is the whole premise of how AI can personalize learning and just reduce a little bit of that um, yeah, workload for teachers. Like I still get flashbacks of when I was in year two and you know, constantly <laughs> trying to find worksheets and next steps and um, resources that would cater for all the needs. So yeah, to think that you could put all your class on one platform but it's constantly adapting and changing and it's not just yeah. a, that bolt-on resource at the end of the lesson because you're yeah exactly um that's brilliant um i think we've answered all of our questions which is great and thank you so much to everyone for putting through um such great ones really good to to feel those um to nora eric and toya um 
we'll now share a slide um, just with further information um, about Sentry. So if you're interested in the platform, if you want to have a further chat, and um, we'll put our details on um, the screen in front of you that you can see now. Um, and do uh, go and check out Cairo English School's website. We'll share that also um, and follow the fantastic work that they are doing because it is such a privilege um, to get to work with this school. They really are fantastic. And I think what we've seen um, throughout the presentation is that they are certainly developing independent learners, but also more importantly, happy and positive and, and motivated learners, which is just so wonderful to see. And yeah, just thank you again for that video. It's incredible um, to see your students in action. So Eric, Toya and Nora, thank you all so much um, for your time and uh, everyone who joined us this afternoon. Such a pleasure to speak with you all. So we'll leave our details on the screen. Um, we'll turn ourselves off mute and um, turn videos off on mute. We'll just leave this running. And if you're um, finished and heading off for the day, thank you so much. And um, feel free to leave the webinar. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.